see you're pointing your gun. <laughs> Watto in the background. Who's gonna pay for that droid? Welcome back, everyone. For Star Wars Month, and to celebrate the 25th anniversary, we are checking out Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace the Video Game. This action adventure video game was released in 1999 for the PC and PlayStation 1. Published by LucasArts and developed by Big 8 Productions, makers of Herx Adventures, Gauntlet Dark Legacy, The Simpsons Wrestling, and MTV Celebrity Deathmatch. This game was an interesting experience. I hated the controls and most of the levels were very linear. However, something about this game's story fascinated me. It does roughly follow the story from the movie, but it's like the developers had an early draft of the script and had to come up with their own alternate Star Wars universe just to connect it all together. They also probably felt it needed more action, so they took creative liberties to allow players to channel their inner dark side. Like Obi-Wan famously being able to kill the Gungans, or Padme getting captured on Coruscant and Captain Panaka rescues her. I think that's why this game is remembered very fondly. Not because of the cutting-edge cinematics, controls, or platforming gameplay, but the differences in how the story is told and the personality of the characters. It is still a terrible game, but this game will mainly make you feel frustration and laughter. I wonder if this game was rushed because, at times, some of the levels felt quickly put together, while others like Mos Espa felt like it had more time to design and create lots of NPCs to interact with. I'm sure the reason for the game being rushed was to get it out in time for the movie's release. As of writing the script, I did find the YouTuber Flan Drew who did an interview with two of the developers of this game. I highly recommend watching both parts, it will fascinate you. But keep watching until the end of this video and I'll give you guys a quick summary of his interview, as well as what kind of content got cut, including a PvP mode. As usual, we're going to go through the story, so spoiler warning, what I liked and disliked, and any funny or awkward moments that happened to me during my playthrough. Let's go deflect laser blasts. Half the time. Once again, it's an old game that can't be bought digitally. Oh wait, Sony just started selling it on PlayStation 4 and 5 like 4 months ago. Well, Amazon and eBay are still selling old copies for PC and PlayStation 1, but don't waste your money. Just go to the tried and true myabandonware.com to download it. Select the LGU Repack by Blaze1992, install the game, then make sure to use the disk image file to pretend like you inserted the disk. Oh man, remember that was a thing back in the day? Gosh, I feel old. Then double click TPM Fix. Click on the DG Voodoo configuration to change the resolution. Otherwise, recordings will look like this. For me, even after changing the resolution, the main menu and cinematics still had the same problem, but the actual game has the correct resolution. If you guys know how to fix this, leave a comment and I'll pin it to the top for others to see. Before we get started with the game, I thought it was worth mentioning the voice cast. Most of the characters were voiced by new actors for the game. However, a few actors got to voice their characters like Jake Lloyd voiced Anakin, Andy Sacombe voiced Watto, and Ahmed Bess voiced Jar Jar. One voice actor that surprised me was Greg Proops, that guy who guest starred on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, he voiced this thing called Fode and Bead, the announcers for the pod race. Now on to gameplay. Like I said, the controls are bad, because it's an old game. You can turn your character left or right, or move forward and back. There is a roll sideways, but you are locked into animation. On a mouse and keyboard, this can get annoying for platforming. You need to line up just right, otherwise you may not make the jump. You can sprint like your Sonic, push giant boxes, and grab some ledges. You have an arsenal of weapons, the light stick, or I, I mean lightsaber, a blaster, a machine laser, rocket launcher, and a thermal detonator nuke. Ready when you are. There's something about this little thing bouncing towards the enemy, then a giant explosion just cracks me up. I can see why everyone freaked out in episode 6. Thermal detonator. 
There are some other weapons, but I'm going to wait until later to talk about. Throughout the game, there are NPCs you can walk up to and speak with. Most of the time, it's asking pointless questions that have zero impact on the story. Some might be important in helping guide the player in the right direction. Others, like in the Gungan City, might help you get past a door. If you see a dialogue choice in purple, then it is Obi-Wan or Qui-Gon using their Jedi mind trick. That's mainly it. The only other thing is cheat codes to make things easier. Like, the weakest gun in the game suddenly becomes the most powerful. However, if you use too many cheat codes, the game straight up tells you, no more cheating for you. Here's a list of cheat codes to use. Just hit backspace and a text box will pop up. So without further ado, let's force push our way into this. Like every Star Wars game, we get the beginning title crawl. The title crawl text is the same. Two Jedi Knights arrive at the Trade Federation ship to resolve the trade dispute on Naboo. Obi-Wan starts us off with a line that's said in every Star Wars movie. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. Qui-Gon goes over the plan. They must convince the Viceroy to leave the system. Then a droid comes in welcoming the Jedi. Then Qui-Gon feels something is wrong and tells Obi-Wan to look out the window and see troop transports. Then realizes the room is filling with poisonous gas. You can walk over and talk to the droid while taking damage from the toxic gas. Who sounds like Mon Mothma from Jedi Outcast in Empire at War. The Viceroy regrets the delay. He will be with you shortly. I needed to change some of the buttons, which I encourage you to do. Then as you walk out the door, droids start shooting at you. I love how Qui-Gon sounds like he's blocking hundreds of lasers. There are some buttons to activate, but they don't do anything except drop a laser gun for Obi-Wan to use. Continue down the hallway and take out two droids. Going to the left, you'll have to fight a droidica. Then you can talk to this droid, but nothing happens. Meet up with Qui-Gon and activate the button to take out this droid in the room. If you lead this R2 unit here, it opens the door for a full health power-up. Head down the hall, the Viceroy will lock himself in the room. A droidico will show up, then two more. Follow Qui-Gon down this vent. I try my best to jump up there, but there seems to be an invisible wall. I'm able to jump back up, but I have to fall down. The ship we arrived in gets destroyed. Explore the vents, activate this button to open a door. But here is where we find the famous grinder to watch Obi-Wan turn into ground beef. Here I learned when using your lightsaber, you're either swinging it to block or attack. If you are attacking, then you're definitely gonna get hit. Sometimes the blocking works, but I'm not sure if they intended on the player to block every time they hit the mouse button. Sometimes it felt easier to just hold the button down to block, but there always seemed to be an opening. I think they were trying to have the player be more active when trying to block each laser. The main issue is the timing. The animation is just too slow, leaving you exposed. Anyway, open this door to talk to this Trade Federation guy. He doesn't say much. He just tells you don't touch the power generator. Feel free to kill him. <laughs> then make your way up here, head down this hallway, find Qui-Gon. He says to take a transport down to the planet and reunite on the surface. A simple puzzle of hit this button, then find this button, take the elevator down, Fight some more droids, use the force to knock them down, then finish them off. Get on this platform to finish the level. Overall, a good first level to get familiar with the controls. Another thing I forgot to mention, I hope you love Star Wars music because it plays on a loop. One song loops when there's combat, and a different song plays when you're out of combat. And every level is different. A cutscene shows the droids landing on the planet, and Obi-Wan swimming to avoid them. Start swimming because something is trying to shoot at you. I even tried to go back and see if I could find it, but no luck. I did learn that weapons carry over from previous levels, so do explore and find weapons to hold on to. Obi-Wan finds Jar Jar, but he runs away after more droids appear. It is easy to get lost, but you just need to follow Jar Jar. He will keep telling you what to do. Push this log to get up here. Then follow Jar Jar or fight some droids, and this is when I thought I had my first crash. But no, the game just froze for a few seconds, and then it unfroze. However, whatever action I was doing, like attacking, then Obi-Wan will keep swinging forever, even if I let go of the mouse button. The easy fix is just go to the pause menu. Get ready for platforming, because that's what this level is all about. I recommend saving before jumping, otherwise you need to start the jumping sequence all over again. There's also a lot of battle droids, so saving before fighting might also be smart. 
You just never know how much health you might lose. Who knows when you'll find the next health power-up. You can just use a blaster to destroy droids from a distance. This area has a lot of droids. Actually, the droids keep spawning, so it's not worth being over here. More platforming. Definitely save your game right here. Unlike me, you need to double jump to make it to Jar Jar. You have some dialogue choices, but it honestly doesn't really matter what you say. You just need him to help you find Qui-Gon. When you try to follow him, the droids keep coming and shooting at you. They come fast enough that if you try to shimmy across, you'll get knocked down. The droids keep coming until you at least attempt to cross. Forcing a player to fall down just so they have to do the platforming again is the stupidest gameplay design I have ever seen. So, I had to run around for a third time to get across this area, follow Jar Jar who walks right into an army of droids, get onto the turret and take them out before Jar Jar dies. However, the game kept freezing on me. I'm not sure if it's because it can't handle so many enemies. The turret would just keep shooting and turning. Just need to keep hitting the pause button. Eventually, I get through it, but man, I was worried this is just going to get worse later on. Spoiler alert, it does. Keep following Jar Jar and find Qui-Gon. He says they need to find a place until these droids pass by. Jar Jar says he could take them to Odo Ganga, but then remembers he's been banished and bad things will happen if he returns. But Qui-Gon reminds him that there are a thousand terrible things headed this way. So Jar Jar takes them to Gungan City. Overall, a decent level, but I thought there was a little too much platforming, and fighting the droids here was really annoying. Anyway, follow Jar Jar and Qui-Gon to see Boss Nass. Or get close to Gungans and watch them freak out because you're an outlander. The guard says Jar Jar has to wait here while we go and see Boss Nass. Boss Nass starts by saying Jar Jar broke the no come back -y law, so he must now be executed. Qui-Gon just moves the conversation to the Trade Federation who are invading and they must get to Naboo. Boss Nass says they don't like the Naboo, but they will help by giving us a bongo and going through the planet core. Qui-Gon tells Obi-Wan to go and get Jar Jar since they need a navigator. Then Qui-Gon openly says to try not to hurt the Gungans, but we all know where this is going. You can murder all the Gungans if you want without any consequences. Well, just not Boss Nass and his council. They have to stay alive. Most Gungans are scared of you, but there's a few you can talk to, but nothing special about it. Just keep taking the bubbles to different areas and follow the path. Except here, I'm getting blocked and can't get through. Although, as of writing the script, I realize now I could have just used Force Push to get him out of the way. That might have been the more peaceful solution. Now on to platforming. Then, another platforming puzzle. Best to save it. It'll save you time. Of course, it's best to grab the blaster, but it forces you to jump down, then sneak past these patrols, or just run past them like I did. This area, you can talk to this guard and use some Jedi mind trick to get him to open the door, Otherwise, he won't believe you and attack you, which is what happened to me. This puzzle is simple. Push the box to each corner and activate the button. Do this for all four corners, then jump on the green button to open the door. Next puzzle is push this box to this button. You have a short timer to get through the door. Then talk to this Gungan and tell him to raise the bubble lift for you. Now, for this room, I would use force push because this room is actually scary. The Gungans in this area have lightning grenades. In my case, I ran around hoping I was going in the correct direction, and I was able to find Jar Jar. Quickly got him caught up on the plot. Boss Nass will provide us with a bongo which we will use to reach Theed and warn the Naboo. You must help us navigate. Then followed him to the exit bubble, almost dying in the process. Overall, it's not really a fun level with these simple puzzles and platforming, but killing the Gungans has definitely made it memorable. We arrive in Theed, and just on the other side of this bridge is the palace. What could possibly happen? Beyond this bridge is the city of Theed and the Queen's Palace. Follow me, Obi-Wan. Mr. Hill's big mechanics! Look out! Did we just watch Qui-Gon and Jar Jar die? Okay, I need to know if there was something in the early draft of Episode 1 like this. Anyway, you can try to platform this way or just fall into the water and swim over here. Swim across the pond and do some platforming, shoot or use the force on the other side to extend the bridge. Then take out these droids either by deflecting or just shoot with your laser. Then hit the switch and continue on. Help these Naboo guards, then head back and talk to the Naboo guard. He will tell you the best way is over the bridge, 
but you tell him that the bridge is gone, so he tells you... The only other way is through the garden. That's suicide. He gives you a new weapon, but I honestly think it's not that good. Don't bother using it. In the garden, there are tanks and lots of battle droids. It's up to you how to handle them. Either take them out or run through them. Hopefully, you grab a health pack along the way. Make sure you find this injured Naboo guard. He gives you the password to the security gate that leads you out of the garden. I would avoid the tank and just continue on until you find the security gate. Then follow the guard, but watch out. Oh. At least there's a health pack. More puzzles to solve. Head up here, hit the button to raise the water and wait for the big fish to leave, then swim to the other side and hit the switch to get the water level to go back down, and hit the switch to activate the bridge. Shoot or use force push on the switch to activate the bridge, then jump up here to drop down, hit the switch to open the balcony door, run around and jump back into the window, shimmy across the rope, and find a rocket launcher. This will be useful for the tank that killed Qui-Gon and Jar Jar. Honestly, the easiest thing to do is hide up here, wait for the tank to get stuck, and just shoot it with your laser gun. This game was obviously not tested. Jump up here to open the first gate, then jump to the other side to jump and shoot the other switch. Overall, a simple level, not much to really say about it, but I do question if this needed to be in the game. I am glad to see that you have survived. Qui-Gon, you're alive. I wish you could tell me how you did it, but we need to talk with the Queen. We need to escort the Queen to her ship that has no weapons but powerful deflector shields. There's a convenient passage that goes straight there. We're cut off. Take the Queen and find another route. We'll meet to the hangar. Of course. Just me and the Queen have to take the longer and more dangerous route to the hangar. Follow the queen, she'll show you the way you need to go. First you need to push this giant block, as if Obi-Wan has force strength or something. Now, save your game, then attempt to jump to get to the other side and open the door. The queen lets you know she will stay put, so you can go and explore a little bit. But don't venture too far or she might get killed. There is a rocket launcher below the balcony here. There's a mother that needs you to find and save her son. They somehow got separated during the droid attack. The kid is literally down the street. Just tell him it's safe for him to return to his mom, and the mom will give you nothing. Continue on, and you can find this injured guard. He needs some water. So if you jump down here and follow the path, you'll find some water to give to him. He tells you to follow the path to get behind the tank and take out the droid controlling it. But it just frees the tank. However, the button here opens the gate, so you and the queen can just run past the tank. However, before doing that, go find this guy begging to be let out. You might be thinking not to do so since he must be a criminal and he's just claiming he was wrongfully imprisoned because he was organizing a resistance. He will run up here and it seems like a pointless thing to do, but don't worry, this will make sense later in the game. Continue past the tank, tell the queen to wait here, run across the bridge, grab some health and a rocket launcher. Watch out for the droidica. I tried clearing the way, but then a second droidica appeared from out of nowhere. Also, did you notice that random thermal detonator went off? Anyway, I tried again, telling the queen to take the stairs with me, double rocketing the droidica, and now she will wait for me here. Head back up these stairs, and this old woman is troubled a stranger just entered her home. You can ask how to open the gate, and she will tell you, but then you can make fun of the old woman. You should really lock your doors. You should mind your own business. Please, get out of my home. Whoops, I guess this home is vacant now. Jump out her window and shimmy across the wire. Then open the gate and regroup with the queen. Take out these mines from a distance. Get to this bridge, then jump over and talk to this guy who's really proud of his boat. He says it's the finest one, but even Obi-Wan asks if there's a deadly waterfall at the end of this river. Long story short, there is. Anyway, head up the stairs, shoot the switch to lower the bridge. Then take out the droids approaching from both ways. I use the rocket launcher to take out the turret. Talk to this guy to open the room next door and grab some health. But the queen was in danger and I tried to help her out and I went from 100 to 7 health. So I reloaded a save which went pretty far back. So reminder, save often. I tried again and got the health. The room also has a flying droid that will follow you and shoot at enemies. Talk to the guards and they will help you push forward to the hangar. Lots of droids, so I use a tiny nuke grenade. Go into the hangar and take out the droids to make it safe for the queen. 
then find Qui-Gon at the end of the hangar. Everyone hops into the ship and they take off. Overall, a very linear level with some exploration, but I still had a fun challenge with it. We now get to play as Qui-Gon. We need to head into the town of Moss Espa and find a replacement T-14 hyperdrive generator. Jar Jar and Padme are going to come with Qui-Gon. Right away we run into sand people, and wow, they are tough. I would suggest taking this guy out first since he can shoot through his allies. Then use your allies as a distraction to take each one of them out. Don't forget force push. Try to take as little damage as possible because there's not many health power-ups in this town. Now get to exploring. This is actually a nice change-up compared to the linear levels. Just watch out for these guys because they will run up and push you, which does a little damage. Feel free to walk up to any NPC and talk to them. If you are heading in the right direction, you'll find Padme right here. And she'll tell you she lost Jar Jar and tells you to look for a boy named Anakin. There are some buildings to go into, but keep following Anakin. If you want to do a quick side quest, head up here and take out these criminals. Jump down and take out the bounty hunters and save this guy. He will give you engine binders, which you will need for later. Head back to the same area and follow it to the end and talk to Shmi Skywalker. Talking to her, she promises to take you to Anakin if Qui-Gon promises to help free Anakin from being a slave. Qui-Gon agrees, so follow her to meet Anakin. He can tell Qui-Gon is a Jedi from his lightsaber. Qui-Gon can sense the Force is strong with Anakin. However, quickly the topic changes to asking Anakin for help to repair his ship. Anakin mentions Watto has parts for any ship. So we follow Anakin through the junkyard. It's got a little platforming, but you'll come across some Jawas. They become hostile for some reason, but I suggest running past them and grab this fuel converter. You'll now get to talk to Watto. You'll try to bargain with him for a T-14 hyperdrive generator, but you don't have enough money for it. He won't take Republic credits, and trying to Jedi mind trick him won't work. He says if you can at least get 50 pegats, then he would be willing to gamble for the parts at the pod race. Just outside his shop, you can talk to Anakin, who tells you he needs two parts to fix his pod racer. Qui-Gon can then bet on him for the pod race to get the hyperdrive. We just need to find a servo control system and a mass coupler. There's also these blue Twi'leets to talk to. She tells Qui-Gon Jabba will lend him money. They will meet Qui-Gon at the arena just before the pod race. If you head back where Padme was and walk into this building, you'll find Jar Jar. Tell him to head back to Watto's shop. There's this alien in a red dress that needs your help getting her son back. You can try and talk your way in, but it won't work, and turrets activate to prevent you from coming in. To get in, you need to head back near Watto's shop. Run up these stairs, jump out the window, and cross over with this wire. Then run through Sebulba's apartment. You can talk to his escorts if you want, then climb across to the other- Mother f They did it- They did the stupid thing again! It will always happen on your first attempt. So you have to run all the way around and do the same thing again. Once you jump down, I would suggest taking out this guy first, then her, then both turrets. Finally grab this full health power up. Now we need to fight this boss. It looks like a mutated Wookiee. I took about a quarter of its health, however it took almost half of my health away. So I'm not sure what the intention was for fighting this thing. The best thing to do was stand on the stairs and wait for it, then shoot at it for a bit. It'll try to run at you, but it doesn't seem to know how stairs work. Until one time it did and it scared me. But it reset and I just repeated doing this until it died. Then rescued the son and returned him to his mom. She gives you a repulse booster. Then head to this shop near Padme and Anakin. It's Barbo's shop. And if he's not there, you just need to wait. He's out wandering around and will return soon. Trade the fuel converter and repulse booster for a servo control system. Wizards, I just need a mass coupler and my pod racer will be fixed. Then go find this guy and trade the portable fusion coil and engine binder to get the mass coupler. Then return to Anakin to finish the level. Now one last thing I want to mention, there's actually other ways of completing this mission. If I went back and talked to Watto, I could make a deal and get a hydro spanner. That way I could trade with this guy to get the mass coupler. That's cool for a game like this that they made it possible to complete this mission in different ways, depending on who you talk to first. Overall, a really good level with some interesting side quests to do. We see Darth Maul is watching over us. First Padme tells Qui-Gon good luck with Watto and Jabba. We will meet her at the race. Before going in, head to the left and find this little area. You'll find a sand barge, but sand people seem to have taken it over. At least grab the blaster. It'll be worth it for later on. 
Also, feel free to go get some chokey. How do you make fresh dried chokey? Well, you'll find yourself some chokey while it's fresh, and you'll leave it in the doomed sea for three days. <laughs> uh, what else would you like to know? Then find this guy, and take a guess that he loves to gamble, which he will give you a Corellian Ale, Kyle Katarn's favorite. Then go talk with the blue Twilight from the last level. She will guide you to Jabba, so follow her. I don't like what she says about, if I survive the meeting, maybe I'll see her later. I decide to hold off on that meeting and go talk with the gatekeeper. He sounds like a Batarian from Mass Effect. Republic Atari's? You think you're on Coruscant? Stop wasting my time. You should have killed me on that asteroid over Terra Nova. I Jedi mind trick him to let me in for free. Then listen to Max Rebo perform with a Wookiee. Talk to this guy who's friends with Watto and give him a drink, but then he asks you to give a drink to his friend. So go to the bartender, but sometimes he doesn't want to talk, so just keep trying until he does talk to you and he'll give you a free drink. Then give it to the friend, who will then go check if Watto wants to talk to you. Don't wait here because Watto will always say no. So just follow the guy because he's drunk. Watto says to come back once you have 50 pegots. So let's head back and continue down the path, which we will fall into a pit. The 50 pegots are right there on the floor, but we speak with Jabba. He wants to watch Qui-Gon fight his beast. Wow, could you imagine if this scene was actually in the movie? So we need to fight a boss. You probably thought it was going to be a Rancor, but it's some other type of monster. It's all about shooting and jumping to dodge the attacks. The monster will sometimes throw the spike at you, and will run to the edge to grab another one. When the monster attacks, he's locked into an animation, which gives you a small opening to attack. Sometimes Jabba throws small health packs into the arena to help you. Well, after a while, I was able to beat it, but I barely had enough health left, so I restarted and tried again, and this time I ended the fight with more health. Then go talk to Watto. Now you have enough to wager Anakin winning the race. Watto will give you the T-14, and Anakin will be set free. Otherwise, if he loses, we have to give up our ship. However, after the deal is made, Watto says something about smoke is coming from the pod racer. Run by the bar, and now the way is clear. Follow the path across the track. Ask for this guy if you want a full health power-up or a blaster. Take your pick. Head down and Anakin will be yelling out that a thief stole a capacitor from Anakin's pod racer. Chasing him will lead you to some sand people, but you don't have to fight them. They got ranged attacks that almost killed me, so I reloaded a save and just carefully chased the thief around. Follow him back to that guy that gave you a choice of a health power-up or a blaster. Head inside, kill the thief if you want, push on this secret wall, then use it to jump up here. Now we have a second boss to fight. Turrets will slowly pop up over the course of the fight. The issue is this guy has a shield. I couldn't figure out how this works. It just seemingly turned on and off at random times when I got close. I tried blocking the lasers, but the turrets shoot too quickly at me. I even got stuck here for a moment. So you're probably wondering what's the best way to beat him, like this. <laughs> yep, I don't think this boss fight got tested. Let me know in the comments how you're supposed to beat this boss. Well, grab the piece and return it to Anakin so he can race. We then listen to the race and Anakin wins! Overall, a tough first boss fight, then an even more difficult second boss fight, but at least you can exploit it if it's too difficult. Not many side quests to do, but it was still a fun and interesting level. Now for the shortest level in the game. Watto is upset, but he gives you the T-14 as promised. Then tells Anakin to come along. Shmi is thankful as you head out into the desert. Those scout droids from Darth Maul are flying around and attacking you. I just run past them and get here when Darth Maul blocks the way. He will try to fight you and you're probably thinking you have to defeat him first, but actually just jump up here and push the rock away to get through. Then Darth Maul will keep chasing and try to attack, but literally all you need to do is just play keep away. Just wait until the party gets to the ship. You'll then just automatically trigger the cutscene of Qui-Gon jumping into the ship and escape. Overall, I guess this needed to be here for story purposes, but I think they could have made a better or more interesting boss fight with Darth Maul. I bet you this was put in at the last minute before it was shipped off. We now arrive at Coruscant and play as the well-known character Captain Panaka. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan say they are off to the Jedi Temple with Anakin. We escort the queen to her taxi when it gets destroyed. Take out the droid, then turn around and take out a couple of bounty hunters. Escort the queen here and take it to the other side. 
You can try talking to the droids or people and ask for help, but they don't seem interested in helping. They let you know about a city tour you can take in order to get to the Senate building. It'll cost 100 Republic credits for each person, though. Out here, you can talk to this guy and trade Panaka's binoculars to get 100 credits. On the other side, there's a guy who conveniently will sell you his two tickets for the city tour for only 100 credits, because he's got business on Alderaan. As you head inside, more bounty hunters to fight. Unfortunately, as you pass through these doors, the tour takes off after getting attacked. Wow, these bounty hunters really want the queen. Now, I need to move this box over here, activate this button, but you hear the queen get taken and they blow up the bridge. So push this box over here, then run all the way back to activate the switch again and raise the bridge. Move the box again to jump up and push the box here. Hit the switch, jump on the box, and wait for this platform to carry you across. Get ready for a fight, because I died here the first time. Try it again, but from further away. Follow the ledge here to get inside. Follow the linear path and ride this elevator down. Feels like we are heading down to level 1313. Take out the enemies, then take this elevator to go even further down. Talk to this guy to get a password for later. Now, this part is a little confusing. I kept running around back and forth, hitting random buttons, and backtracking to see if it did anything. I wish I could easily guide you through here, but honestly, I have no idea if what I did was the correct thing. Eventually, I made it through to here, and the homeless for some reason think I'm the killer, so they attack me. This computer tells you it needs a white pass key, and this one needs a red pass key. This box up here looks strange, so I pushed it, and it turns out it contains the white pass key. Head back, and inside the room is the queen and the red pass key. I'm almost dead, which really sucks, and I couldn't find any health packs, so I need to be really careful. This room is a bit of a puzzle. It'll be confusing for me to try and explain, but just hit the right buttons in the correct order to get out. Now we get to a room that asks for the password. Doors will open, and now we have a boss fight while I'm almost dead. Don't shoot these things, they explode and deal a lot of damage in a big area. All I really did was keep trying to shoot and walk backwards, and eventually I killed this boss while only taking four damage. Ride the elevator up and talk with Palpatine. He says there isn't much they can do to get support for help on Naboo. Palpatine recommends a vote of no confidence to get Chancellor Valorum out of office. Then have the Senate vote for a new Supreme Chancellor. Then we get a second title crawl updating us on the story. Queen Amidala wasn't able to get help, so she decides to head back to Naboo and try to retake her planet. The Jedi Council denied Anakin's training, but Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are going to take Anakin with them to Naboo and continue to protect the Queen. Queen Amidala convinced the Gungan army to aid them while they sneak into Theed and capture the Viceroy. We watch a cinematic of our heroes back in Theed and take out some droids. We return to the same map, but now in reverse. We head to the hangar to get pilots into their ships. Darth Maul is already inside and ready to fight Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. We then take over as Padme, who is armed with this short-range lightning or taser type gun. You need to spam it on droids enough to kill them, but it behaves strangely. Sometimes it stuns them completely, other times they move around and are able to fire off random shots. There's even some droids that aren't affected by it at all. I'm guessing it's causing them to go haywire so every droid will act differently, but it gets really annoying when there's a lot of them in an area. Just be cautious when using it on enemies. You should have an idea of this map since we are going through it again in reverse. I also want to warn you that freezing was at its worst here. Constantly it was freezing on me. I tried to restart the whole game, but it didn't seem to help, so be patient. It will take time to get through, but I hope someone could one day fix this issue, please. Sometimes reloading a save fixed it, but other times it didn't. When you are ready, tell Captain Panaka to move forward. Cross the bridge and you can see that guy's boat is now underwater. Oh boy, a turret section. It's easy to do, but one of the droidicas got stuck on the wall, so I had to try and kill it the normal way, but it didn't seem to want to die. Now, Panaka was stuck trying to kill it. When I tried running forward, another droidica showed up, so I ran back to try and kill it with the turret. But the camera wouldn't lower down, so I couldn't see the droidica. This game is broken. I then reloaded a save, but then a new droidica showed up behind me and Panaka. What the f***? 
game? I reloaded again, but this time the Droidica didn't show up. I don't know what it wants from me anymore. And then the game started freezing again and it got even worse. I was getting on my last nerve at this point. I thought this level was going to be unplayable. I kept reloading until the freezing finally stopped. I have no idea what is causing these freezes. I eventually took out the Droidica and then the other one to move forward. However, we suddenly fade out and fade in as Obi-Wan. We now start fighting Darth Maul with Qui-Gon. I dealt as much damage as I could until I'm at one health, then I'm able to grab a full health power-up. However, I got stuck attacking, which got me killed. Luckily, I saved the game right after getting that power-up. So I recommend this strategy. Deal what damage you can, and then save the game. Rinse and repeat. When the game isn't freezing on you randomly, Qui-Gon doesn't seem to be doing any damage. However, he seems to work as a good distraction. Although none of the weapons seem to work, except the rocket launcher. That seemed to scare Darth Maul away. Follow after him. Then we fade back to Padme. Under this archway is a lot of droids. If you have some grenades, this might be a good area to use them. So I tried taking them out, but there's just too many of them, so I circled back around and told Panaka to charge forward. Ask this droid to open the door, take out the generator to open the gate. Head to the right and go talk to this guy if you remember you rescued him as Obi-Wan. He says he's been stockpiling weapons for a revolution against the Federation. You can tell him to give you the weapons. This is why you should rescue the guy from earlier in the game. Head back and clear out the droids. Then you can tell Panaka to destroy the generator blocking the way. But he uses the thermal detonator nukes which will hurt you if you're standing too close. Follow Panaka, take out these droids, then follow him to the end and get ready to rappel up to the palace. We fade back to Obi-Wan and continue the fight with Darth Maul. Now he's using Force Push. Just do the best you can until Darth Maul runs away again. Then Qui-Gon calls Obi-Wan and tells him, the choice is yours, my Padawan man. Wait a minute, I'm having flashbacks. I have a bad feeling about this. Of course. Son of a bitch, Qui-Gon, you knew this was gonna happen again. I hope you die a painful death. Just walk over to this door and the level ends. Overall, this was a great level, especially the unique game design of bouncing between Padme and Obi-Wan. We made it to the last level. We start with Padme. She orders her soldiers to guard their exit. Panaka and Padme move down the hall. There's a locked door that needs a white passkey. There's this guard you save before going into the next room which is heavily guarded. Don't bother trying, there's way too many and the game began freezing again. Don't worry, open the room to the left and take out the two droids. Then go to the room to the right and take out another two droids. Drag this big crate to the other room and use it to hit the button and open a secret hallway. Ask for the white pass key and then head back to unlock the door. Then we swap to Obi-Wan. So unlike in the movie where Obi-Wan can just jump back up to continue the fight, we need to find a way up there. There's some droids to fight, but you just need to ride the elevators. Now, before jumping, save your game. It is really easy to not make these jumps. And Obi-Wan forgot how to grab ledges. Move into this room and you can turn on the lights. Then hit this button to deactivate the shield. Then carefully maneuver around and hit this button. Now, how are you supposed to get that one? Force push, of course. Everyone knew that. Now we can make the jump to the other side. Passing through this door will then have us fade back to Padme. Down the hall is a turret. First hit this button on the wall to open a door. Kill the droids and grab the rocket launcher from here. Take out the turret, then the other droids. Watch out because there's another turret down the hall. Then two droidicas attack. That was actually scary to see, but the rocket launcher should be enough to take care of them. Get some weapons and ammo from this room, and then take out another droidica who keeps rolling away from me. Well, once he's dead, down the hall and take out the third turret. In this room, we need a blue pass key. But when I get into this hallway, there's a lot of droids and I don't have much health left. When Panaka saves my life and takes them out. And then best of all, there's a full health power up in this room. Beware, I think droids randomly spawn in this hallway. I encounter a droidica in this room, but then suddenly there's two droids in the hallway again. Panaka takes them out, but he also seems to attack randomly. Most likely droids spawned again somewhere. Yep, they did. Well, grab the blue passkey and return it here. Then enter the next room. You need a red passkey now. It's up here on this pillar. So what you need to do is grab this box, bring it here. 
Then push this other box here and push it onto the other box. Carry these two boxes here, run around and jump onto it. Then grab the red pass key. Drop it off here, then head inside and watch out for these droids. Grab the stuff, then enter through the doors at the end of the hall. Back to Kenobi. We watch Darth Maul and Qui-Gon slowly move forward. Follow the linear path, get to the other side, into this room. At first I was stuck for a while and couldn't figure out what to do, until I found this button. This will open up a secret door so you can pull out this box. Bring it over here, but don't try to jump over. Push it here against this wall to jump up here. Now we just need to rearrange the force field so you can get a clear path to the exit. When you run to the other side and you get to these doors, we switch back to Padme. Continue on and enjoy a turret section with freezing. It was screwing me up and trying to take out these droidicas. I didn't have enough health left later on, so I had to restart and do a much better job. Head to the room on the left and walk across the ledge carefully. Then get into this room and take out the droids. Then walk into the throne room and take out the droids. Let Panaka into the room, then confront the Viceroy. He asks if you're here to sign the treaty, but Padme refuses, so he springs a trap. It's a trap! It's a trap! Oh no. Take them out and then capture the Viceroy. We return to Obi-Wan once again. Just ride the elevators, carefully, get to the other side, ride the elevator, then jump to the platform and head down the hallway. Just like in the movie, we watch Qui-Gon die. I have killed your master and now it is your turn to die, young Jedi. Okay, are you guys ready for this complex guide on how to defeat the final boss, Darth Maul? Okay, stand over here, take out your blaster, and shoot him. I don't think anyone at Big Ape tested this final encounter. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna do that to you guys. Just know you can easily beat him by doing that. Now, if you are going to try legitimately with just your lightsaber, then listen up. Darth Maul does one of three things. He starts right there and will attempt to hit you with red lightning. If you are within medium range, he does decent damage and it's unavoidable. You either need to decide on running far away or get up close to get him to stop. Once you are up close, he will either attack you with his double-sided lightsaber, which does a lot of damage, or he will force push you away. You need to avoid his lightsaber attack, obviously, and ideally hit him during the force push ability. Jumping backwards before he can strike you is also a good idea. Overall, that's your small opening, so rinse and repeat? It's definitely easier said than done. Once you hurt him enough, he will move away and then throw an object at you and jump up here. It is tricky to get up there, but once you are, the same rules apply. Deal enough damage and he will now run across the bridge over the pit to the other side. Same thing again until he then runs into the middle of the bridge. Now you fight him until he dies. Yes! I got him. After just two attempts, I was able to figure out the timing to defeat him with barely enough health to spare. There are two full health power-ups on each side of the area in a secret room, so use them if needed. Get to Qui-Gon and he will tell you to train Anakin and Obi-Wan is now a Jedi Knight. The Force will be with you always. May the Force be with you. The final cinematic kept freezing up on me, but it's for the most part just like in the film. As promised, I said I would talk about the two videos Flan Drew made while talking to two developers, and wow! I was right about some of the things, but I was also surprised by other decisions. We have Mike Ebert, the co-founder of Big Ape Games, who was the co-project lead and one of the level designers for the game. The other developer was Way West, who was the 3D modeler and animator. To start, this game was going to be very similar to one of their earlier games, Herx Adventures, a 2D adventure game. Ray said they decided to switch to 3D because around that time technology was moving towards 3D graphics since 3D accelerators were hitting the market. Seeing what was now possible, they decided to take on this new challenge. Remember that monster Qui-Gon had to fight? That was the very first thing Ray created in the game engine. And he was surprised it got used in the game, since as Star Wars fans we were probably expecting a Rancor to be there. 
However, Mike says they had to change up the game since they decided it might be too much to expect all gamers to upgrade their PCs with these monster 3D accelerator cards. The game was expected for the PlayStation 2, but the console got delayed so they had to quickly figure out how to make it work on the PlayStation 1, which he says LucasArts was in charge of porting it to the PlayStation 1. I was right about how this game got an early version of the script. They had a, they had a script for us. And obviously the pod race scene was the big scene. We had so much footage, rough versions of the pod race. And we were told pretty much we couldn't do the pod race because they're doing a pod race game internally. Some big gaping holes though, were how the Jedi fight, what sort of powers did they have? Um, the entire battle at the beginning on the Trade Federation ship, we almost had nothing until maybe about a month before we shipped and suddenly we saw footage and we were we had to quickly change a lot of that stuff. There were many things LucasArts told them they couldn't do. Strangely, LucasArts said they couldn't do first person or even third person view because they didn't want their game to be too similar to other Star Wars games like Dark Forces. They were also told to remove the Gamorrean guards on Tatooine. That's why we ended up with these guys that look similar to Gamorreans, but they aren't. They saw the final footage from the movie on what the Jedi could do, which I assume was this scene. This explains why the fighting with a lightsaber is so buggy and awkward. Sounds like they didn't have time to polish the combat and make blocking lasers easier. Also, the Droidicas were a late addition to the game, but it honestly felt like they were part of the game for a while, so good job to whoever put them together. Captain Panaka sounded like a more important character in the early drafts, but after the movie came out, he wasn't really in the movie that much. Which did make the Coruscant level feel strange since there's no action in the movie, but at least it was a cool experience in the video game. Coruscant was a level they felt they could have left out, but it was a level they worked on from the beginning. They felt it was at a point they might as well keep working on it and finish it. They tried to fit in as many characters as they could, like Jabba and Max Rebo. Jar Jar, at least, had less of a role in the game compared to the movie. They said the first level they designed was Mos Espa, and it showed. That level felt like a big town you could run around and explore. There were a lot of NPCs you could talk to and have conversations with. They said they probably spent too much time on it. But once they had more information on the movie, they then branched off from there and worked on other levels. Which explains why these levels were so linear, but Mos Espa felt like a completely different experience. The very beginning of the game was quickly put together. Once they saw the final shots of the movie, they had to quickly figure out how the door worked and what it looked like when it opens and closes. Then they learned a droid was supposed to be in the room and the room fills with gas just so the game matches up with the movie. When asked about letting the player be able to murder almost everyone in the game, Michael said it was mainly because they didn't want the game to be too linear forcing players where to go and what they must do. Like the Gungan level, if they took that gameplay element out, that level would get boring quick. It makes sense since this level is essentially just moving from one bubble to the next with very minimal exploration and some platforming. Having the choice to kill Gungans at least adds a challenge to see if you can get through it without killing any Gungans. Or kill them all! Then there is this third level on Tatooine where you can murder everyone after they wave goodbye to Anakin. Michael says that level was also put together at the very last minute after realizing that was going to be a very important scene from the movie. That explains why that level is so short and easy by just avoiding Darth Maul until you win. They did feel they should put a soft lock to the game if you went too crazy with the murdering. Like if you murder innocent people, Anakin will repeat this line. I won't help a murderer like you! <laughs> Thus requiring you to load a save before the murder or restart the whole level. They talked about the pathing in the game was very simple, but they don't really know the specifics of how it worked. Even though it didn't happen to me, Padme has been known to get stuck on Obi-Wan, and it's because of her AI pathing. That's why I wasn't too hard on it, because I need to remember also when this game came out and there was only so much developers could do for AI programming in games. Ray even shows the actual development program they used to create the game. They talk about the PvP mode they were able to get working, but it was just too late to ship with the game. If they had just one more month to work on the game, there was a good chance we would have gotten to enjoy the chaos of PvP.
Remember how memorable that spinning fan was, Obi-Wan gets grinded up into pieces? Well that led Rey into a story. He quickly talked about how the character models are essentially pieces that are connected together. But when you jump into the fan, it tells the game to just disconnect all those pieces and throw them around. This was going to be an idea for when the player uses their lightsaber to cut arms and even the heads off enemies. However, they got a big NOPE from LucasArts when they watched them demo the game at Moss Espa. They were in this area with the kids running around, and they watched as Qui-Gon decapitates one of the kids. Ray even mentioned they tried to add blood to the game, but we all know LucasArts would have given them the biggest nope in the world since that would have given the game a mature rating. Mike did confess they almost had no playtesting in terms of difficulty or, as I've witnessed, these boss fights. The only kind of playtesting they did was just to find major bugs. It was pretty obvious they did not ensure that this was balanced. They just kept working and adding whatever they could all the way up to when the game shipped. The last thing they talked about was a level they wanted to add, which was the Gungan battle. That was something I figured would be in the game. As they said many times, they ran out of time and Rey hadn't gotten far enough to creating a level for them to use. I imagine it would have been waves of enemies and probably us playing as Jar Jar. Overall, it was a great interview and again, I recommend you go check it out for the full story. In conclusion, Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace video game is still a pretty awful video game. The controls suck, things don't register correctly, it's mostly linear, except for the Mos Espa levels. The only thing I enjoyed was the small changes they made to the story and how certain characters behave compared to the movie. Murdering Gungans as Obi-Wan is something we will never get to see again. I'm not sure if I want to see this game get the remake or remaster treatment. Unless they promise to polish it up and make sure your lightsaber's defense is as good as Jedi Outcast. It's probably best to just leave this game in the history books or on Wikipedia. If you want to relive your nostalgia, then get it on MyAbandonware.com. If you like playing terrible games and then talking about it on YouTube for content, then here's the game for you! I did rewatch Star Wars Episode 1 in theaters this month, and it's still not a good movie. But it's still fun to watch the action scenes, the pod race, and the final duel with Darth Maul in a movie theater. I understand why it gets so much hate, but as a kid, I thought it was the coolest movie I ever saw. Plus, it laid the foundation for a new era of Star Wars games and merchandise for my generation to enjoy. Next month, it's time to get serious and play a classic shooter game. See you then! Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to help grow my channel, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Become a member to get exclusive content like behind the scenes commentary. Also check out the Time Pals podcast and my merch store. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.